Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I want to share with you a few thoughts from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, which reads like this. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Wow, that's a good title there, isn't it? Moving forward into the perfect life. Not laying again the foundations of repentance, but moving towards faith in God. Mm. That says it all, doesn't it? So many people find it difficult to believe that you can ever be perfect. Well, that's why Christ was born in us. That's why we were baptized into his name. When we were baptized in the Holy Ghost, Christ came into us. But when we were baptized water in his name, we were placed in Christ. Baptism places us in Christ. And it is the Christ in us that is the perfect man. Yes, the Christ in you is the perfect man. So many Christians struggle with perfection. How can they ever be perfect? Well, you are in the flesh. You're not like the resurrected Jesus man yet. And in the flesh, we have to bear certain things. Now, <clears throat> says you to move on from the things of the law, to move on towards perfection, not laying again the principles of repentance. That's what we do, doesn't, don't we? we? We repent every time we go to church. The preacher makes us feel so bad. If you've got that type of preacher <laughs> that makes you feel bad, then you get uh, right with God. You go to the altar every Sunday and then uh, come the next day. Uh, you get to feeling not too good again and you uh, make some kind of mistake, maybe sin or something. I don't know, but many people do. And so they find themselves in a big spiral of confusion, a big cycle of defeat, the success and Jesus on a Sunday, and sin and depression on the Monday. And then you go back to church again to get right with God. And then you get wrong with God in the week. And then you go back to church to get right with God again. And this cycle of repentance that Paul uh, talks about here in saying that we ought to forsake uh, uh, this style of repentance and do dead works. Hmm, now understand me clearly. Repentance is good, but we should not live a life of constantly repenting because that suggests that we are not living a life of constant victory. There's a difference between sin consciousness and a righteous mind or a righteous consciousness. We are to have the mind of Christ. We are to live in the righteousness of God, not the sin consciousness of the world, the flesh and the devil. Now, if we go uh, to, on to chapter 10, verses 1 to 6, it says here, For the law, that's what we're talking about, laws. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices uh, make a man perfect. This is what it's saying. You can't pray enough. Some people are trying to discipline their flesh, and it's good to do that. But uh, doing so does not make you perfect or right with God. You can't pray enough, according to some people. You can't go to church enough. You can't fast enough. You can't tithe enough. You can't give enough. You can't live holy enough. Because these sacrifices can never perfect you. I'm not saying they're wrong. They were practiced by Old Testament saints and still practiced by saints today. And it's good to strive unto perfection. But what I am talking about here, don't misunderstand me, is the perfection that is in Christ. Christ in you is the perfect man. Christ in you is the man that does not sin. Christ in you is the Holy One. Verse 2, For then would they not have ceased to be offered? If those sacrifices, done yearly or weekly like some people do, <laughs> were the right thing to do, then they would have made you perfect by now. But verse 2 tells me, For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers once purified 
would have had no more consciousness of sin. Wow. How come then all these practices? A man can go to church and be conscious of sin all his life. A man can pray and be conscious of sin all his days. A man can read his Bible and still be conscious of his inability and failures before the Lord. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, for the worshippers once purified would have had no more conscious of sin. Once purified, a man would have no more consciousness of sin. Hmm. The Christ in you is not conscious of sin. How do you deal with the consciousness of sin? It's to see yourself as living from the Christ out. Mm, hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It says in verse 3, But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, every week, every minute of the day. Therefore, when he came into the world, verse 5, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but the body you have prepared for me. Then said I, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Lord. Then he said, verse 9, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. That's a key scripture there. He takes away the first, the righteousness which is according to the law, and replaces it with a righteousness that is according to Christ. Where Christ has become your righteousness, and we rest in that. By that will we have been sanctified, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, verse 10, once and for all, through the second, hmm, through the age, the works and manifestation of grace, we have been blessed. We have been sanctified. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Verse 14, for by one offering he has perfected forever those which have been sanctified. Glory be to God, you have been sanctified, justified, perfected by the blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses us from all sin. The perfect man. Let us strive, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundations of repentance. I don't want to live my life going in a circle, do you? No, I want to live my life going in a straight line, going from A to B, from success to success, not from failure to failure, from repentance to repentance to repentance to repentance. No. Hmm. I thank the Lord my world ended when I was baptized. Now Christ is in me. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Oh, the perfect man. Perfection is possible when you understand the righteousness of God in Christ and live it. This is Paul Thomas of Pentecost.tv. Have a great God given day.